Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JD Traders Tea Time recording with me, Dajus Lanchauskas. Uh, today is the 17th of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this, um, as I've mentioned already, recorded session. Um, so, yep, uh, this recording is coming out on in the afternoon um, on Tuesday. So, yep, welcome everyone. Um, so, as always, we'll have a quick review of uh, certain instruments, certain, uh, see what happened from with them during the morning. Well, a few instruments that we've recovered in the morning and some new ones as well. So, as always, before we uh, jump in, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute an investment advice or investment recommendation, um, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. <clears throat> Okay, so also just uh, before we uh, jump into the charts, quick um, um, mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our coming, upcoming videos and of course our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page uh, which we update as well on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on gfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. Now then, um, before I jump in, I just wanted to quickly run through this map again. Um, so I have looked at this one previously. So uh, just a quick refresh basically of what's happening with the whole coronavirus situation and uh, here you can see um, that in a way uh, for now of course although China is kind of the leading the way in, in terms of uh, the most infected people Italy actually is um, is taking first place in the uh, percentage in the uh, in the let's say in the deaths to uh, infections ratio. So basically, as you can see here, so it, although China has around three thousand one hundred uh, and eleven deaths right now, um, still still kind of the. Um, the uh, the ratio here um, is still bigger and uh, in a way uh, China basically is kind of like I said it is 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 falling um, and uh, um, for now still Italy has a bigger percentage in a way with Italy here um, it, it has about two two thousand one hundred and fifty eight deaths to uh, twenty seven point eight nine hundred and eighty infections currently registered um, so that's equates uh, around seven point seven percent so basically um, yes uh, the speed here is quite significant so for now just wanted to quickly show you what's happening here guys in general and and uh, yep, for now it seems that uh, yes, we managed to overcome that 180,000 barrier. Uh, but it's um, for now it seems that yes, it might continue drifting uh, further north. I mean the number. So yep, uh, if, of course, like I said, you can always have a look at this, the statistics yourself. But most, most, of, the most important, of course, you guys stay safe and uh, yep, take care of your health. Now then, uh, jumping into the markets and just uh, kind of seeing what's happening here. Here, basically the FTSE 100 um, had a bit of fluctuation here today drifted lower but not as much as it did yesterday um, where for example yesterday it managed to almost reach the that 4800 and uh, and let me just quickly zoom back here into history, guys. I mean, this is a bit of far uh, that I need to travel. So this 4,868, um, 69 zone, which is the lowest point of September uh, uh, 2011, that's where the um, the index was uh, kind of almost hitting that territory uh, yesterday. 
um, but fell a few shy, a few points shy from hitting that. But today, um, yes, we did get a few swings here and there, but basically it just continues to move sideways, I would say, because looking at this four hour chart, you can see that um, we had a drift lower, but then it pushed back to the upside uh, towards this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 6th of March. I spoke about this line uh, yesterday and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this one because if we get a break of this downside line, then there's a bit of hope. We could see maybe a, a, a larger uh, correction to the upside here towards this other downside line taken from the high of the 24th of February. So in other words, guys, for now, be very careful and uh, in a way uh, for now we're ourselves we're not doing anything here we're just observing this one because if we get a break of this downside line the steeper downside line then yes we may see a, a nice good push higher here towards this uh, other uh, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 24th of February. But of course, of course, if this downside, this steeper one continues to hold and the price falls below this 4,869 territory that I've mentioned, well, I mean, brace yourselves. Of course, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, further declines are possible. And then we will aim for that uh, lowest point of 2011. And let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. Um, a little bit, uh, a, a, probably a daily chart would uh, would help here a little bit. Um, but yeah, guys, to the lowest point of 2011, uh, around the 4,791 zone could be a nice target for this index. But that's, of course, if we fall below the 4,869 territory. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, so NASDAQ 100. So uh, the US equities have opened uh, already. And uh, looking at this daily chart here, you can see see that we've managed to climb back a little bit here uh, managed it's currently index is currently trading in profit or it shouldn't say in positive territory uh, around 1% uh, but of course all eyes are on the yesterday's close yesterday's low here which is around the 6994 mark so if we get a drop below this this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and well lower levels could be met of course don't get me wrong we are not far from this lowest point of 2000 and um the lowest point of 2019 here, uh, which is roughly around the 6,937. Uh, but if that fails to withhold, then yes, further declines are possible, guys. And of course, uh, we will then start targeting uh, maybe even levels like the lowest point of this of, of lowest point of 2018, basically, which is around the 5,895 zone. But of course, we do have some some potential areas of support here as well. Uh, but but um, for now, for now, all eyes are on the yesterday's low, which is around the 6,994 mark. If we get a drop below this, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low, but also be very careful and keep your eyes on the lowest point of 2019, roughly around the 6,937 mark, because uh, if all this, uh, if this still, if this area still keeps uh, the index afloat, then yep, uh, we could we could see maybe a bit of a rebound here. Of course, it would be nice to see, but for now, it's still it's one-way traffic here. It's very difficult to find that rebound of uh, something that you keep an eye, you should keep an eye on is of course this downside resistance line taken from the high of the twentieth uh, of February. So in a way, um, even if we do get a bit of a rebound here. Anything up until this downside line could still be seen as a temporary <clears throat> correction before another leg of selling. So that's why you guys be very careful on this one. Um, uh, the S&P 500. So um, I've looked at this one previously, and uh, last time I looked at this, I was I was looking at the monthly chart where I was telling you guys um, to keep an eye on this um, this upside support line taken from the lowest point of October 2011. And as you can see, we managed to break that one now. And uh, well, I mean, we've managed to drop uh, already um, from the peak which we saw in February. Uh, we managed to uh, drop around 30 percent already guys so um, of course this is not looking good we're clearly approaching this lowest point of uh, 2018 which is roughly around the 2347 mark uh, we'll keep an eye on down because 
this could be a nice area of support but again if if this is just seen as a temporary obstacle for the bears then yep well i mean for the clients could be possible we could start uh, aiming for the lowest point of uh, november 2016 and that's roughly around the 2083 mark slightly below that we do have uh, the uh, of course the psychological 2000 zone but again let's hope it's not going to travel all that way here but uh for now the all eyes are on on this upside line and the reason why is because uh, as you can see for now for march we are yes trading below this territory below this upside line uh taken from the low of the uh lowest point of october 2011 but if let's say by any chance we close we manage to close this monthly candle above this upside support line now this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers maybe as we could maybe go for a bit of correction here a larger correction to the upside again for now of course this is all this is just a bit of speculation but um if we do see something like this now yep we may see a bit of uh upside in uh in april but again uh we need to wait for that we can't really speculate on this too much of course for now we can only monitor this lowest point of the, of 2018 which is roughly around the 2346 uh, 47 mark and uh, we'll see how it performs around there and uh, from the short-term perspective uh, from looking at this daily chart watch the yesterday's low because if we get a drop below the yesterday's low which is around the 2381 mark then yes further declines could be possible uh this because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and well i mean uh, it, more uh, investors could be uh selling this one further for now of course it is a tricky market here um, let's see if we can recapture regain some of these losses but again for now it's one-way traffic it seems to be willing to go further down but um, again uh, let's see how this is going to play out today um, and uh, yep be very careful if we climb back above this upside support line that i've mentioned then maybe there is a bit of hope to see a bit of a larger extent uh, correction to the upside um, gold very quickly on this I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I looked at this one yesterday, and uh, uh, yesterday we were selling off heavily, and uh, uh, what I was talking about yesterday was that if we get a nice good drop below the 1445 mark here, which is the lowest point of November 2019, then yep we will aim for uh, further declines we will aim for this upside support line taken from the lowest point of august 2018 um, and then yep uh, we'll take it from there but as you can see uh, the commodity managed to rebound today also tried to travel south but it did so but didn't quite reach even the lows um, of uh, yesterday and today we're seeing a nice reversal here uh, back to the 200 day EMA. Um, now this is where it could become very interesting because if we see the the commodity, the precious metal staying above the 200 EMA, then maybe there could be a possibility to see this one reversing back to the upside in a way more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in and drive this one back to the, at least to the upside support line to test it. This upside support line taken from the low of the 23rd of, Mar of May 2019 uh, to test it from underneath. Um, of course, not talking about if we get a break of this um, upside line and we see the price climbing back above the 15 point, uh, 1575 mark then yes we will become more bear uh, more bullish than bearish on this one but for now uh, let's keep an eye on this 200 day EMA because if we see it close above this line then there could be a possibility to see maybe uh, in the near future uh, to see a bit of a correction here uh, to the upside towards this upside support line this this short sure, this medium term upside Side support line ticket from the low of the 23rd of May 2019. Uh, Brent Brent oil now um, something to consider as well so yesterday I talked about this one and uh, what I was saying that if we get a nice good close below the 31.30 zone then yes further declines could be possible the next target for us will be this 29.95 zone which uh, we've met yesterday already and today uh, the commodity remains kind of uh, trading around it continues to trade around it um, that level just to quickly remind you um, that level is the lowest point of February 
2016. Um, you can see that for now the uh, the price is kind of balancing around it, but if it starts sliding further south, um, the next target for us to consider is the lowest point of 2016, and that's roughly around the uh, 27.13 uh, mark. So I've previously mentioned this one, guys. So yep, keep your eyes on this one. Good, very good potential target. Uh, don't get me wrong, if that gets broken, then well, I mean, this is this is where it could turn out to be even more ugly, ugly for uh, for Brent Oil. So keep your eyes on this one for for the upside. In order to let's say consider some higher levels. Um, of course, previously I was looking at this 13.16, uh, sorry, 36.14 level. But what um, we will keep an eye on here, just not to even in a way try to waste any potential moves here. Um, the 36.4 for uh, the 36.10 zone, which is the high of Friday, in a way, keep your eyes on that one. If we get a push above this that level, then uh, maybe it could open the path towards the uh, towards the 39.60 mark, uh, which is the high of the 11th of March, and if that gets broken, then well, it could lead to a deeper, or, or should I say, it, not a deeper, but a larger correction to the upside. For now, it's leaning more towards the downside, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of still uh, balancing around this uh, 29.95 zone. Uh, if it continues to drift further south, then yes, we, the next potential target for us is around the 27.5. Uh, 15 zone roughly around there um, that and that's by, by the way the lowest point of 2016 um, jumping into actually AUSD that's the first one I wanted to quickly show you your euro USD is going to be uh, the later one um, and uh, AUD USD continues to slide and uh, as you can see the commodity uh, kind of linked currencies are taking a hit as well and overall of course this is not looking good so we are on a steep decline here this is a daily chart guys so um, yep not only that we are trading below this uh, downside resistance line um, we are also trading below a steep, a steeper one, but I'm not going to drag, draw this one because the chart will get a little bit messy here. So, uh, but of course, we would need to go a little bit into history here uh, in order to try and find some support levels. One of which is this one here, the lowest point of October 2008. So this is where we are right now, guys, and this is what we are testing right now. So uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, let's see if this area can hold um, for now it would be it would be ideal to see this area holding but if it fails to do so then well I mean start bracing yourselves for further declines again the same story applies as uh, with mm, with the S&P basically so uh, we would like to see the monthly candle staying above this level so above this area above the lowest point of, uh, of October 2008 if we do see something like this then we could maybe consider uh, uh, a, a bit of a correction here maybe next month but for now for now it's uh, it's difficult to talk about those uh, corrections for now we're keeping close eye on this lowest point of October 2008 let's see if it holds that's roughly around the 0 0.60 mark um, so that's psychological 0 0.60 zone. So yep, keep your eyes on, the, on that one. Um, and uh, yep, this is what I wanted to quickly show you guys. And it's a very interesting level. Let's see if it can hold. Um, now then, very quickly as well on US dollar against the Singapore dollar. I've, I've looked at this one um, a few times recently. And what I just wanted to kind of show you is this, that the uh, basically this is probably one of the best uh, gauges here against, uh, or the gauge, Again, to see how the whole coronavirus situation is ha is going along. I mean, you know, here the Singapore dollar is very vulnerable to the whole coronavirus issue because Singapore economy re heavily depends on China um, and, and on trade as well with Europe. So, um, and the markets are, and Singapore, of course, is one of the, uh, the hubs for the financial markets. And for now, as you know, the financial sector is not really doing well. So, um, 
here you can see that we managed to overcome the uh, the highest point of February here which was roughly around the 1.4088 um, now in a way again it's I, if I'm not mistaking um, it's kind of accelerating towards uh, uh, yes this is what I'm talking about. So this basically it's, it's almost approaching the highs of 2017 and 16. Um, the only problem, of course, on the monthly chart is the 200 uh, 200 EMA here. So um, you can see that we've managed to approach this. It's going to be very interesting to see if we can actually break this because last time we've managed to break the 200 EMA here was back in 2001, guys. And this is I'm looking at the monthly chart. So we are very near this this uh, 200 EMA let's see if it can do it uh, 200 EMA on the monthly chart let's see if it can overcome it um, if it cannot I mean if if this area could provide some resistance to, at least temporarily then uh, coming back to the daily chart we could maybe see a bit of um, correction here at some point to the downside maybe back towards this uh, this 1.4088 zone or we could even consider uh, an, an upside support line here which could be tested as well but again for now guys all eyes are on that 200 EMA on the monthly chart um, for now, like I said, yes, uh, it continues to accelerate here. You can see that, but um, now let's see if it can get a hold up near that 200 EMA. Um, USDCHF, looking at this daily chart, I talked about this one this morning. Uh, what I was mentioning here was that um, if we get a push above the 0 0.9570 uh, mark, then yes, we will aim for some higher levels. So uh, we managed to get a nice pop above this, uh, a nice rebound initially from this upside support line, and then a pop above this uh, above this barrier near the 0 0.9570. Um, you can see that it traveled further north, but got held by the 200 EMA here, or should I say, it's currently getting held by the 200 EMA on the four-hour chart. However, um, if it remains above the 0 0.9570 territory here today then well I mean we'll continue targeting the upside um, but again with the upside as the same as I mentioned this morning we will consider the upside being a part of a larger correction to the upside because we are still below this downside resistance line taken from the highest point of November 2019 um, in terms of the downside we need to see a break of this upside line and then we'll consider some lower levels for now uh, it's it's looking quite good here for the USDCHF, but uh, let's see if it can stay above the 0 0.9570 territory and also if it can overcome this 200 EMA on the four hour chart. Uh, GBP, GBP JPY, very quickly on this, a very interesting pair. So uh, here we have ourselves um, a bit of weakness of uh, of the pound um, and uh, USDCHF. You saw that this uh, the Swiss franc, which is considered also as a Swiss safe haven, um, was kind of declining against the US dollar, which, to be honest, recently also acted as a safe haven. So uh, that's why, guys, um, here in this situation we have a weak pound and a safe haven yen. So everything's according to textbooks um, but let's have a look at this picture here you can see that uh, the pair is kind of flirting with mm, with this level here, the low of yesterday, which is around the 128.83 mark. Uh, we did get a small overshoot, but it's the rate is still kind of balancing around this level. We need to see a nice good uh, close, at least of a four hour candle in order to aim for further levels. Um, again, for now, we're more bearish than bullish on this one because also we can see that the pair is balancing still below this downside resistance line. Now, it's a bit of a tentative one, I do understand that but uh, we have to kind of draw here some something we can see that the trend for now is yes still to the downside but uh, we're struggling to overcome this 128.83 mark uh, which is the low of yesterday so we need to see a nice at least a, at least a close of a four-hour candle in order to kind of aim for further declines and by further declines uh, we will start aiming for uh, levels 
uh, last seen here in September 2019. Uh, and uh, one of those good targets could be here around the 126.68 mark, which is the lowest point of September 2019. Um, you can see that we managed to overcome this low, the, the lowest point of October 2019. And uh, yep, it continues to drift further south. Like I said, the next target for us is around here, around the lowest point of September 2019, or maybe a little bit uh, fractionally lower. We do have the, uh, the in general, the lowest point of 2019, and that's around the 126.55 mark. So also a good potential target uh, to consider. Uh, of course, uh, for the upside, we need to see a break of this downside line first before we could uh, target some higher levels. And finally, EURUSD. So I talked about this pair this morning and uh, I was telling you guys that we were uh, hanging around here, but we were neutral. Although we were still above this upside support line, we were still more on the neutral side because in order for us to consider further a further directional move, what I was saying this morning, that we need to see either a pop above the 1.1238 zone, which was which is the highest point of December 2019, or a drop uh, below this upside line and below this 1.1050, uh, 54, 53 zone. So we managed to get that. We can see that the four-hour candle so far is trading below this uh, below this level here, below this 1.1054. Um, if we see Oh, there we go. It, and now it's stayed, showing that yeah, it stayed below this. So in a way, to be honest, further declines are possible. Our next target here is the 1.0949 level. Uh, we'll target that one. That's the low of the 28th of February 20, uh, 2020. Um, and of course, if that fails to withhold, if this, is, if this is just seen as a temporary obstacle, then, well, further declines are possible. But um, again, probably... Uh, we could uh, actually clear up this chart a little bit here. Um, now, one of the levels here I've got is maybe this this territory could be a nice one to consider because previously that was seen as a good um, area of support here back in... Um, um, ideally, if it would load up, that would be even better. But as you can see, it doesn't want to load up. But anyway... Um, so uh, that's the oh there we go. So that's the can, these are the lows here of October 2019. So uh, we could start targeting those, but again for now uh, we'll aim for this 1.0949. We'll see how it performs around here. Maybe we'll decide to rebound. Maybe we'll do something like this. But again, guys, for now this is our target. This is 1.0949 level. Let's see how it plays plays out around there. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for uh, kind of watching this recorded video. Um, and uh, yep, I hope it helps. And I hope you stay safe. Um, I hope you kind of take all the precaution precautions and uh, kind of take care of your immune system. Uh, keep it at the high level. And uh, yes, guys, I'll see you tomorrow at my Trader's Espresso. As always, at 7 o'clock uh, GMT time. Again, uh, that will be the recording, which I'll uh, do a little bit earlier for but um, I'll try to kind of upload it uh, at around 7 o'clock uh, GMT time. So yeah, guys, uh, stay safe, be very careful with the markets, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.